Hey, hey, hey! We don't come here. We don't land here. We there, yeah, oh, hey! Hey, oh! <laughs> okay, so, personally, 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 authentically speaking, ladies and gentlemen, huh? divas and divas, huh? Huh? fashionistas and fashionistas, ha, ha, ha! Na mi de ye. I de ye. All right guys, quick introduction. My name na de rele, we rele, de we re. She we re. I no ko asa. For the first time ever. Bo. Bas bus. I say let me carry life something and come inside. Mo ti be life wale o, mo be life wale. All right, so let me stop. So, we, I mean, we had a nice conversation a few minutes back on um, social media regulations and whatnot. And um, there was something that I said about, you know, when the African youth leaders met in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, the whole idea of the forum or the symposium or the seminar was to understand, diffuse, and tackle the youth unemployment time bomb which is supposed to be from 2010 to 2020. 20, no, 2009 to 2019. But well, guess what? This is 2020. The statistics are grim. And we initially streets ye. And then if not for social media, a lot of people have empowered themselves, all thanks to audience measurement technology. But now that's been taken from us. What do we do? Eh? You tell me, young people, come out. We need to, I think collaborations are very key. We need to collaborate on a lot of stuff. And then also, we need to be more expressive. I understand that to survive in Nigeria, let me, that's generically speaking, but if I bring it to Lagos, to survive in Lagos specifically, huh, if you don't have old money, if you do not know the people in the right places, if you do not know people in the corridors of power, if you are not moving with the right click, because everything is about click and cartel in these times, then what's the whole point of your existence? Okay, anyway. Away from all of that, I will just shut my mouth right now. So, my people, they really no one be a minimum child by me. She lively, money picking, she lively. Hey, what have you? All right, um, so someone was asking me, you know, like what's been one of the most um, embarrassing things that's ever happened to me, hmm, my people. When I want you this soon, when I did for Kitty Vision one, and this was um, 97. When, uh, yeah, because I graduated from secondary school in 1997. That's for you people to know that I'm not your mates. 1997 in Moshetani Secondary School. Oh. <laughs> Actually, so where were a lot of you in 1997? Um, I graduated, of course. I think in my class, I had like the best result, but that's not what we're about. So I was on Key Division 101, and then before my recording, we went to race course to do like. A debate. I know me for school that time. I made a debate. Ah, short, tiny, skinny with my oversized keto sandals. You see me? Huh? Teachers are better than farmers because the farmers. The, and I remember that we had an amazing debate. Trust me, the debate topics I never heard of them in my life. The first one for the preliminaries was the Awaris. No, no, the Awaris are the indigenous of a commune. Ha! I say, tattoo ni awario. But guess what? We won that debate and we moved to the semi-finals. And the semi-finals was, ah, I can't remember. But I remember the finale topic. For the finale, I went against Methodist Boys, Gobi Boys, and King's College. The debate topic was Enhig Betty. Pardon my Yoruba. Enhig Betty is the foundation of commerce in Nigeria. Hey, come and see me on the stage that day. Oh, follow time keepers. Go debate us. And my book, book. And so we won. And I remember when I was in SS3, I could not afford a blazer because, I mean, my parents didn't have... They couldn't grant me that luxury. They didn't have the budget for that. So I had to borrow a blazer. My keto sandals... See, make I tell you now, I don't they also know here. I bought keto sandals oversized in SS1 so that it will last me till SS3. You see my life in the open. Right now, I can buy me... Rather, I can buy out the entire keto store. Okay. So I had to wear these oversized keto sandals from SS1 to SS3. And then, you know, I couldn't go on stage because as much as I say you don't work out, the heel not to chop like that. So I got on stage, killed the debate we won. 
and then the cash price this was an oba oyeko sponsored debate the cash price was five thousand naira that was a lot of money in 1997 early 1997 at that so i got my 5k ha ah, and you see growing up i remember when i used to go to church because i didn't have sunday clothes i used to wear my school uniform to church and one day i was ironing my school uniform and then i iron out charcoal iron now burns the uniform and guess where burns it by my yash ah i to do patch patch and then i remembered when i got to church you know nobody wanted to sit close to me ah, that boy with his tacky clothes you know and whatnot but so with the five thousand naira i got from obaoyeko for winning of course headlining the debate and it was sponsored by the lagos state government i went to balogu market <laughs> ah mora Shoenjo. i buy clothes no be here but you see it's i'm not sharing my humble beginnings here or anything of that sort it's just to say that you know life is a series of thousands of tiny miracles notice them you have to notice every single miracle that happens to you and um, for every time i was subjected to ridicule i was treated like dirt made to feel like shit. for every time that i was accosted in my hood for maybe being different or because i mean i couldn't fight back or i couldn't defend myself i remember that there were the I mean, I used to hang out with my friends. So I lived in Yaba. If you all know Yaba, we're Lala Gomeji, Bonuwe. So I used to cross the street to the next um, compound, uh, next area, which was where Akiumi Street was. And this Akiumi Street had like my close friends, and then they had a pool table there. You know, I never played the pool out of respect. I know what's wala. I know what's insult. So I say, hey. make them they play their pool. And then every time I went there, you know, some boys would come and play pool, and when they would see me, you this stupid lesbian, get out of here. I say, ha. And two pay me lesbian into your loan. Fagots, the cock up me a koto. The fagot was not enough. Now you turn into lesbian. And then, you know, I remember one time I was trying to enter the compound, and then one of the guys just brushed me so hard I fell into the gutter. I went home. I said, ah, maybe they know what make her come this house again. I also had friends opposite our house, and I remember their mother telling me that I should never come to their house, that she didn't want her children associated with a wretched church rat like myself. Wow. I think that... Um, I, it's weird that I'm doing this because I don't do this. But I'm glad that, you know, I went through all that because that, that strengthened my resolve. It empowered me. And because, again... I grew up in a household, I grew up in my family house. We lived in a room the size of my visitor's toilet. Yo! My mom, my dad, myself, my two sisters. It was cramped, you know, and then we lived in a family house. I lived in a house that was filled with so much animosity, so much angst. There were fights every day. And my mother was not Nigerian, by the way, that's my mom. Yes! My mom was on Nigeria, by the way, fought back like no tomorrow. And I think that's where I get my zeal and my resilience from. And the need to be consistent, relevant, and consistently show forth my longevity. This woman here. For a woman, where no be in Nigeria, could I look at picture? Sorry, I don't have to remove these things because I didn't nail them here. For a woman who thrived in a country that you know she knew nobody except my dad and then we moved to a family house should have got back her children and gone back to her country i said well yeah lie i go away when you go away you he didn't go away how do you bring me to this country to suffer but my mom fought the good fight my mom was teaching in a normal like primary school and guess what the school was owned by joro olumofin's mom god bless her soul i taught joro olumofin in school yeah it's crazy y'all Okay, so um, she was in that. She became the headmistress of the school eventually, and um, you know, employed me as a teacher. I was the youngest teacher, but then I, uh, 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 when I, anything I put my hands on, <laughs> I did finish work. No be here. I see I did finish work. Yeah. Okay. So eventually, you know, aside from teaching, I got into the university, joined the theater group. Shout out to Theater Fifteen, a way of life to everyone who saw the need to put me on stage and was not um, compelled to think ah, what a disgusting looking human what a confused looking human because you see when i was in uni like every time then they put me for that beef magazine confused human being confused human being hey 
my people, the journey no be today. Two ways to know your personality. One, the way you behave when you have everything. And secondly, the way you manage when you have nothing. Yeah. Choose a job that you love. You never have to work a day for the rest of your life. Always be a first class version of yourself and not a second class version of anybody else. I am an authentic soul. I am not in a competition with anyone. I am my own competition. I'm like even like my worst critic because you know I'm so I'm engulfed and engrossed in my art that for every time I have to deliver, it has to be done accordingly. So even to anything that I post, let me use social media because I don't give a hoot about social media. Honestly, I started my hustle way before the advent of the internet and I'm about that life of, you know, make it work. I'm also about that life of building success stories. So you see, everybody around me has to be successful. There are times that I leave my own and I throw myself into building foundations, super structures for all my people. And that's why everybody around me is a winner. That we not need to Yes. Okay. So I think the long and short of what I'm trying to say here is: find people that believe in you. Find people that can take you to the next level. Find people who would be able to discover an innate potential of yours that you have not tapped into yet, and they will help you bring it to the forefront. Life is all about learning, on learning relearning and basically coming out to show that you are a force to be reckoned with you can be on this earth you are just existing <laughs> you can't live i mean i believe you ah every day is a party i get up in the morning i dress up i look good i feel good i smell good to the max thank you oh it's about time so my people in the house are going to buy me some things you know and um, I think above all, this matters. What is your headspace like? Where are you in your headspace? Where are you in your mind space? What is going on with you? We talk about mental health all the time, but honestly, mental health is key. Yes, somebody says, I don't know why I'm seeing Bebusi. Uh -uh. Somebody says, I love you. Yes, so it's lost, you wow, great. So you all know that um, I, I signed, I got signed onto the Lush bandwagon for two years and as much as it's a Herculean task anything I get on trust me I will sell it to the max lush hairs on my head every day even if my scalp is burning we just did this one yesterday hey I did do a newbie here and then of course I also signed a lucrative contract an exclusive one at that with the skincare range Blemivy I, I mean I could practically just strip for you guys right now ah ah ignore the filter it's not even filter I say see ah Blame me if they walk. I say, blame me if they walk. Oh, yeah. they walk. Yes. Um. And also, you see, you see, one thing about influencer. I don't know why I'm talking about this right now. Um. For me, my job description is not just about posting fancy pictures on Instagram, putting fun captions. That's not the art of influencing. I put. Somebody said that you strip. I will strip. Ah. Mama, what up, Wendy? I go straight, I go straight. Yeah, so as I was saying, influencing is an art because content is king and content is what mobilizes an audience. It's not just about posting fun pictures, feeling very fly on the gram and whatnot. Nah! Are you moving numbers? Is the brand selling? Are you moving numbers? What is the audience measurement technology for the brand like? Are you looking at the stats, the numbers, the engagements? Are people engaging with your content are people engaging with the brand are people buying are people patronizing don't just snap picture go, go. and say yo that no that's not where your job ends your job that's not even that's like the least description of your brand influencing job as an influencer as a content creator as a brand strategist you need to also understand that you're a social media strategist in the mix your doing what I call business marketing, strategic marketing. My dear, it's a full-fledged job. So to all the influencers out there, shout out to your hustle because, hey, this work no easy. Anyway, today is one of those days that I've, um, I just had a brilliant intellectual conversation with 
NCBN, NG. Thank you for having me on the platform with my good brother MC Abe. And I am in my comfort zone. I'm going to go get my writing done. Yes. So I like to read extensively. I wish I had all the books I was reading. Oh my goodness, they're upstairs in my room. I'm reading five wonderful books. Oh well, I put them out there. We should read. You see, the reading culture in Nigeria is. Ah, it's in. I'm dismayed by it. It's in absolute disarray. Ah, when there is like a smoker's board. I can't speak English. A smoker board is like an, you know, like an exotic collection, like a potpourri of beautiful things. A, a, a smoker's board of amazing writers out there. I think we need to incorporate the reading culture. I mean, if you're not a reader, you see, in my house, I'm the only reader. My sisters don't have time. Growing up, because I was their teacher, mentor, dad, mom, everything, they won't eat until they read. You must consume a book, even not in a day, but in a week. I read one book in a day. I'm a sweet reader. You know, and then not only should you get your younger ones to read, but then get them to write, do like a critical analysis or just write something, you know, in brief summary, what they thought of, what they read. That way you can tell that, you know, they have consumed what they read and they did not just read it on face value and it just went that way. You know, say me, I've been teacher, so I know they carry last. Someone says, it's good I'm standing because I can't see, I can't see down with my energy. See, my body, the hurts. I see my body, the hurts. The hot swelling. All right, guys. So before I yes, so I didn't speak English. Show chine ke me. Someone says bend my hair again. Let me see the center. Okay. So. This is blemi vivo. Ah, this is lush hair. And then, ah, uh, ah, uh, the skin is popping because of Blemivib itself. Violet, you don't follow me, Richard. This is Violet. Violet said we speak plenty English. All right. Um, so let me quickly share, like, a, let me see. I want to say something I've never said before. Um, and I'm going to say this here. Somebody was asking me, so how is it that I am friends with everyone? How am I friends with everyone? You see? I've done the rounds of entertainment so much that I've been in practically every sphere. If you understand what I mean. Acting, modeling, dancing, media presenting, PR, A&R, just name it, networking, I have been there. And I'm still there. And I'm not going anywhere. And if you think, you know, I've had conversations where people tell me, oh, your relevance is to be questioned. You've been, you've been cloud chasing for the past 20, 25 years. Like, duh, what are you doing with yourself? You know what? I really could care less about what you think. Because I am in a good head space, good mind space. I'm at a point, I'm 40 for crying out loud. And I'm showing no signs of slowing down. I'm at a point in my life now where I am at peace with not only myself, but with people around me. And I can smell people that are blood suckers. You see, be a fountain and not a drain. I am a fountain, I am not a drain. I don't drain people of their energy. I don't misuse the privileges that God has given me to take sexual favors or monetary values from people. Let me put this here. There is a popular reality show that's going on right now and everyone has said that my name is synonymous with that brand. So everybody believes that if you want to get on that show, you have to call the Relay. Once you call the Relay, the Relay will make it happen for you. But guess what? If I was a bitch, I would have not only knocked the half of Lagos, I would have collected money from everybody else. But you know, as much as you can, a lot of young people out there still haven't found direction. They're still wondering what to do with their lives. A lot of young people out there are still in the dark. They look at the pressures of social media. And remember, Instagram alone is a template for fake. It's now real. Disruption is constant. Fact is not always fact. The media landscape is changing. What are you doing about that? What are you doing about your brand? So a thought, you reap an act. So an act, you reap a talent. So a talent, you reap a character. So a character, you reap an identity. So an identity, you reap a brand. One of the brands in the building with all the image equity in the world is here. Samantha. See? Samantha Walsh. I don't know how she does it. I say to I'm going to... Samantha, open your yash. That's your small yash. I don't know how Samantha does it, but... Samantha is a single mom. 
Samantha is a VJ. Samantha is a hard work. And you see, Samantha is one of those people who you never see her coming. You all don't know what that girl is up to. When that girl got big things at Guan. Yes. She got big things at Guan. And then, um, shout out to Samantha. Uh, so, yes. Someone was asking me, so do you, really, you have... You know everyone, you have so many friends in the industry. How come you are not at loggerheads? You would never see me fighting with anybody. See, even the fights where they happen, because you see me, I know everything where they happen for this time. I know everything. The secrets I'll take to my grave here. Eh? Oh! Every day is like a revelation for me. But, my people, one of the things you need to learn to survive in this industry, not be everything where you hear, you go talk. No, be everything where you hear, you go talk. Oh! And then also, never forget a name and never forget a face. This is also an industry where from the cleaner to the bouncers to the security personnel to the stage managers to the set construction people to the lights man to the sound guy, you have to know everybody. Do not come on board and act like the boss bitch that you are or boss that you and starts and feel like you don't need to fraternize with the crew or the staff. Are you kidding me? If they want to make you look bad, they will make you look bad. So you have to. What if you enter somewhere and the security personnel do not let you in because they know you're rude and you don't even relegate them any acknowledgement. You don't acknowledge their existence. Huh? You have to start from the grass grassroots gong gong and work your way up and make sure that you acknowledge everyone on that ladder because truth be told be good to people on your way up so that they'll be nice to you on your way down otherwise hmm. when you they fall like this now rock bottom you go hit yes okay so shout out to bk yes oh bk has a track um it's called i am beauty you all know the guy with the cruise confessions have gone viral I am beauty, I am a speck. Haters will hate, potatoes will put it. It's, do you know what that is? It is such powerful words of not only encouragement, but of affirmance. Like you're affirming it. You're speaking positive words into your life. And that's why I tell people all the time. Hmm. Hey! For every time you get a hateful comment on your social media post, Instagram, Twitter, whatnot, I retweet everything I get on Twitter that's because I look for the humor in it. I don't take myself seriously, so I don't take those comments seriously too. But on Instagram, if you get hateful comments, I pin them. Or when I read it, I laugh. Then I go to other blog spots, blog posts, social media posts, and I write like beautiful comments. That's why you see me on people's feeds, writing amazing things. Because people deserve to be appreciated, recognized, celebrated, and acknowledged. Spread as much positive energy as you can. Why I do this? is to tell the universe a no. Because you see, that hateful opinion is not my reality. So I am giving the universe a no. And then I'm also telling the universe, I can spread love and light. So do that, guys. Spread love and light. Spread positive energy. Life is crazy. Life is short. Live each day like it's the last. And with these few nuggets of mine, I want to carry my wish and say, Oh! Oh, Lolo! Oh, Lolo! I carry my wish waka. But then I just hope, I mean, I've never really done this before, so I was just inspired to do it after the live session I just had. Um, somebody was saying, now I see why my friends say, I'm your younger twin in female version. My darling, you're better than me. Oh, you'll be better than me. Sure, go on, go on. I said, you're better than me. You understand? Yes. Dr. Bright, see, Dr. Bright is such a loyal human being. Dr. Bright is the Agbero therapist, you know, based in Abuja. Medical doctor by day, sex, love, and relationship therapist at night. He's such an amazing loyalist. And Dr. Bright, you know, I got you. I got you for life. Ah, music by Tofi says it's 10 30 a.m. He has such a beautiful content to start the day with. I'm glad. Positive affirmations, positive acknowledgements, just speak positive things into your life. Remember, your bad assery. You thrive on bad assery. And as I always tell people, I'm at the point now where somebody says, okay, oh, um, you don't care, I'm acting like a lady, that's why he asked. It's not about acting like a lady here, it's just about what the words that are coming out of my mouth. What I am saying. 
Ignore my mannerisms, ignore my gesticulations, ignore my effeminacy. This is how it was created. This is God's work in flesh. I even think that I'm an earth angel of some sort. I feel like I'm a human being, you know? A proper earth angel. Anyway, thank you all for your positive words. Gigi Sido says, I'm such a delight. You know now. You know the memo, guilty as charged. The one that only they relay from Mama Kabio. You love my vibes. Yes, I am a vibe. Ah, and you found your new hairstyle. Please do it. And use Lush whilst that's it. And in case you're wondering how to go this way, Glad Bem, if you want to see the back of my hairstyle. So before I go, ladies and gentlemen, a little strip tease. Let me remove the pints so you can see that I remove the pints. This is the prick area. Are they pricking? Yes. I get it. Ah, fabulous joy OAP says what color of blush? I think it's like silvery gray, but it's from the Wild Braids collection. So, ladies and gentlemen, whilst I stylishly take off my clothes, I say thank you all very much for joining me. And now I am carrying my winch and I'm going away. Yay!